This is the companion video to go along with the Math Horizons article, Beating the Seven Color Map Theorem. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you how you actually bead crochet these models. Uh, here you can see a couple of the models of the three that are in the article. This is the largest one right here, and here's the medium-sized one. Uh, and if you haven't bead crocheted before, I'd actually recommend that you start with one of these larger models. You can see that they're quite flexible, but if you're new to bead crochet, there's a tendency to crochet a little bit too tightly, and the longer your tube is, the easier it is to fold it up. Um, I'm also going to recommend if you find uh, that you're having a little bit of difficulty with these instructions, you might try this model instead as a start. Um, this you get just by taking five colors and stringing them in sequence over and over again. And the advantage of this is that every time you stick your crochet hook into a bead, like say this purple bead, you'll be putting another purple bead down onto it. It just makes it easier to know where you're putting your stitches. Um, but I'm going to be demonstrating making the smallest of these three models, so let's get these two cleared out of the way. Um, and I have here a nearly completely strung strand, so we're going to get that all ready to go in a moment. But uh, first, I want to show you, this is a nearly completed version of this tube. I, I just want you to get a sense of what this is going to look like when it's completed. Um, so you'll notice that all these beads, they're sitting in a tube, and they're sitting flat so that the flat ends with the holes are pointing towards each other. But these beads at the top, there are five of them, they are in fact sitting on their sides. So they're sort of sitting, when you hold it up like this, kind of in the position of car tires. That's going to happen all throughout the crochet, and it's the actual doing the crochet stitch that will push the bead flat like that, so that it matches the rest of the tube. So that's what we're heading towards. But uh, back to the beginning. So this is almost completely strung. There's just one line of the pattern left to go. Um, and normally what I'll do is I'll take the beads and put them in a row in separate containers like this. That just makes it easier to keep track of the colors that I'm working with at any given time. Um, so I have the last row of beads right here. Um, and I'll generally line up one row of the pattern at a time on the needle. So this is the last row of that smallest pattern. And now I can just slide that down to join the rest of the beads. And this is now completely strung. So we can take the tapestry needle off, and we're ready to start crocheting. The beginning of this process will be familiar to any of you who crochet already. Um, but if not, we're going to start, we first of all make sure that we've got a nice long tail here. We're going to start by making a slip knot. So I take the yarn and I stick it over and then under. So you have this kind of little pretzel shape here. And we take the crochet hook and we stick it underneath the part that's under and then pull the two ends of the yarn to tighten that, that knot. So that's a nice little slip knot and we have a single loop of yarn over our crochet hook. And so now we're ready to start crocheting. This begins like any piece of crocheting with an initial crochet chain. And so we're going to bring down five beads. Our initial chain has five, um, and I would seem to have lost one of them, so hang on a second here. There's the fifth bead. And we're going to make a chain in which there's a chain stitch that holds each bead. So we'll start by bringing this purple bead down right next to the slip stitch, and then wrap the yarn. You see I'm wrapping it from back to front. That's the way you always do it in crochet. And then we're going to take the hook and use it to pull that loop through the loop that was on the hook and you'll see that that forms this little V. That's our first stitch on top of the first bead. Okay, so now we bring down the next bead, and we do the same thing. We bring it right up next to the crochet hook, we wrap the yarn back to front, and we use the hook to pull the new loop through the old loop, and now we have a second V. And we're going to keep on doing that with all of our five beads. So we, we try to pull the uh, loop through. Um, there we are, third bead. And as you're doing this, you want to make sure that you don't do it too tightly. It's very important to keep this relatively loose so that it's easier to start the crocheting and crochet it at the end. So there we are, we've got all five of the beads on our initial chain. You'll see there's a V on top of each bead. And if you look, this is about how tight you want it. You want there to be a little bit of space between the beads, not too much, um, but you don't want it to be any tighter than that. So we're now ready, after these first five beads, to close up our round and start crocheting in this tube. And so what we're going to do, we take the, the first bead that we crocheted, the purple bead, and this is very important, you turn it up 
towards you, right? So the V's are on the top, the beads are hanging down, you turn the purple bead up towards you, and then you stick the crochet hook into the yarn underneath that purple bead, and you push the purple bead back behind the crochet hook. This is also very important. It needs to be on the far side of the crochet hook from you. And so you should have something that looks like this. And now we're ready to bring down the next bead. So I'm just gonna bring them a little bit closer here so it's a little bit easier to work with. And now we're going to pull down the next bead in the line, so the first of those two purple beads, and we're gonna bring it down. You see it's coming between the two loops of yarn that are on the crochet hook. We're gonna bring that down, keep it behind the crochet hook, wrap the yarn, and pull it through both of the loops of yarn that are on the crochet hook. So that's completing what's known as a slip stitch in crochet, and you'll see there's the new purple bead on top of the old one. Now we're gonna do this again for each of the chain stitches. So I work the crochet hook into the blue bead, push the blue bead back behind the crochet hook. Always push the old bead back behind. And then we bring the next bead down. And once again, we're gonna pull it through. Uh, so when you make a slip stitch, right, you're pulling it through both loops. Um, you can actually do it one loop at a time. You don't have to pull it through both. So here I'm pulling it through the first loop and then the second. And if you're new to this, you may find that it's more comfortable to do it that way. Um, once you get a little bit more adept at the stitch, it will go faster if you pull it through both loops at the same time. But uh, you can do it either way, whatever feels best. Okay, and so now we keep on going, we pull the third bead, this is the fourth coming up. And same process each time. We stick the hook in, we push the bead back behind the hook, we bring the new bead down, it will also be behind the hook. Wrap the yarn, pull it through. And now we've completed the first five stitches. Right? So this is the beginning. You'll notice it's a little bit floppy. It's always a bit floppy at the beginning, but we have the five beads in the initial chain. And then on top, we have these five beads that we've just stitched on. And you'll see, again, these are kind of on their sides in the sort of uh, car tire kind of position. Okay, and so now we just keep on stitching the way that we did before. Each stitch is going to be exactly the same as the ones that we've done so far. Um, and I'll, I'll show you a few here. I, I'm gonna show some slowed down stitches a little bit later on with a bigger two, but for the moment, um, up until now what I've been doing is I've been sort of feeding a bead down and, and then making the stitch and then sticking the crochet hook in and sort of feeding the next bead down separately. That's probably how you'll do this when you start. But when you get more comfortable with the stitch, you'll find it's a little bit more efficient if you bring a bunch of beads down at once, so you sort of just take a chunk of these beads and you put them in the hand that you're using to hold the yarn. So your non-dominant hand, I'm right-handed, so it's my left hand. And now I'm just gonna use the fingers of my left hand to feed the beads down as I go. It's just a lot more efficient this way. So I stick the hook under and then I just use my thumb and forefinger to push each bead down as I go. Right? And when you've had practice, then you will find that it's a lot easier to crochet at this kind of pace. It will take a while though. This is definitely, there's a big learning curve here. And at the beginning, these stitches are going to feel very awkward. So you just have to kind of hang in there and give yourself an opportunity to sort of learn what you're doing. And I'll, I'll show you again the stitches in a little bit more detail on a slightly larger tube in a moment. But uh, this is, this is you know, sort of how you go through. And you can see we're starting to get uh, this tube built up a little bit. I think I'm gonna stop for a moment now. Um, so you can see that the beginning's a little bit more stable than it was before. And uh, I'm just gonna stow this. So if I wanted to stop, what I'd do is I'd pull the yarn through like that. And then you can just set this aside. So here we have a tube that's a little bit further along in the process. And so you can see this looks a little bit more like that finished tube that we looked at at the beginning. Um, the beads are all sitting flat in the middle of the tube, and you can see that they um, are arranged in this kind of slanted thing. They spiral both ways. Um, it's a little bit easier to see the spiral in the direction of the color changes like that. And then at the top here, we've got those five beads that are sitting on their sides. So I'm gonna 
put the hook back into the loop here and tighten this to get ready to go. But you will notice there's not that much yarn left to crochet with. This will happen periodically. So every once in a while, you're just gonna have to take all of the beads and slide them down the yarn to make more room. All right, so it's a bit of a nuisance when you're doing it, but you just have to do it now and then. And now we've got plenty of yarn to work with. So let me start off by showing you one of these stitches a little bit more slowly, All right? So I'm gonna load my beads up here into my left hand. And now I'm stitching into, once I have this set up, I'm stitching into the purple bead that's just after the crochet hook. So I'm gonna stick the hook under the bead and then push the bead back behind the crochet hook. And now if you look closely, you'll see that's exactly putting that purple bead where it's supposed to be in the tube, right? It's now lying flat, it's in between the purple and blue beads on the row below. Um, so that's the part of the stitch where that goes into place. And now my yarn is in between the two loops that are on my crochet hook, right? And that's where I want it to be. I'm gonna bring the next bead down and it will be behind my crochet hook again. And now I'm gonna wrap the yarn back to front and pull it through both loops, right? So that's what every stitch is going to look like. Now, the other thing that I wanna show you is uh, what happens when you mess up? This can happen sometimes. And this is actually a mistake that I used to make fairly commonly. I now have to think really hard to make it. But um, again, I'd said the yarn comes between the two beads. If you accidentally get it lodged behind the bead that you're crocheting into, and then you make your stitch and you're not paying attention, and maybe you keep on going and you crochet for a while, do the next few stitches, and as the tube turns around as you're crocheting, um, you'll eventually get back to this point, you'll look down and you'll go, that, that looks wrong. <laughs> it just looks really wrong, right? This purple bead in particular is really, really not where it's supposed to be, right? So here's the good news. Whenever that happens, all you have to do, you just take the crochet hook out and you pull out the stitches back to where you made the mistake. You can always do this. In fact, while you're at it, you might as well pull out a little bit further. Just pull back to where you're positive that everything's okay. And then this little loop is the loop that goes on the crochet hook. If it's a little bit retracted like that, you can take something like say the tapestry needle and pull it out. And then you stick the crochet hook back in and pull the yarn around it. And now you can start up again and it's like it never happened. It's really the most awesome thing about crochet. Uh, and any of you who do any form of crochet or knitting will be familiar with this. You can always pull out and start over, right? And so now, we go back and do a few more stitches. Really no trace of what happened. Um, and again, this gets easier the more that you practice this. So this is relatively fast uh, compared to what I would expect at the beginning. But there we're well past the point where we made the mistake and you can see everything looks just fine. So here we are back with the almost completed tube. Uh, and I'll just get the hook back in here and tighten it. And we've got six more beads to crochet on um, before we're ready to close this up. Uh, I have to say this size is, I think, definitely my favorite. Um, as I said, it's a little bit tricky to start with as your first bead crochet tube. And it's because there's this tendency when anyone is starting actually any kind of crochet to crochet a little bit too tight. Um, it in fact took me a while to loosen up enough to get a tube this small to close up. Um, but uh, it's, it's worth trying to loosen up your stitch enough to do this. Uh, using a bigger hook can help if, you're, if you find that things are coming out a little bit too tight. Um, okay, so here we are. We're at the last bead to go on. And now once we've got that bead into place, we're going to wrap the yarn around the crochet hook with no bead now, because there are none left, and we will pull the end of the yarn through, and now we're ready to actually cut it off. Uh, so just grab the scissors here, cut off the end, and pull that through, and now we have a complete and secured tube. The only thing that's left to do is to sew the ends together. So let me get this yarn out of the way. Um, and we don't need the hook anymore either. Uh, and so, there we are, uh, we're ready to put the ends together. Now, 
you will notice in looking at this tube that these last five beads are still sitting on their sides. They're not flat yet. So they will be flattened into position when we actually stitch the ends together. So this is where I differ from a lot of other bead crocheters. Uh, most people use this uh, yarn that's coming out of the tail end where we finished crocheting. I actually prefer to use this bit that comes out of the initial crochet chain. So I'm putting that on a needle now. I just find I like the results better when I do that. Um, and now with a tube this short, you don't really have to worry about this, but with some of the longer bead crochet tubes, um, you can actually end up accidentally twisting the pattern out of shape so that the colors get all messed up. Um, so when you're doing the longer tubes, you're gonna wanna look closely for this line where the colors all transition, the line that's going down the length of the tube. And you wanna make sure that you don't wrap that around when you close it. Right, so you'll definitely want to take a more careful look when you're closing some of these longer tubes. So we're going to sew the beads together um, to approximate what they would actually look like if we were crocheting past that point. We're going to crochet the chain or sew the chain beads in the order that they were put into the chain. And then the end beads we're also going to do in the order that we crochet. So the first one we're going to sew into is this blue bead that, that's the next place where we would have stuck the crochet hook. So uh, let's see, actually going to be better off repositioning it like this. Yeah, there we go. Um, so there's that blue bead right there that we're going to sew into. And so I'm going to take, once I have that cleared out of the way, I'm going to take the needle, I'm going to stick it under the blue bead. And now the needle is going to do what the crochet hook was doing before. I'm going to push the bead behind the needle so that it's lying flat the way we want it to in the tube. And then when you pull the yarn through, the yarn will push it the same way that the crochet stitches were pushing it. So it's now lying flat the way we want it. And now we go to the second chain bead, that blue one, because the yarn was already attached to the first one, and we stick the needle through there. In this case, the bead is already held in place by the chain stitch, so it's just stitching the yarn right, right through that yarn. Uh, and now we go to the next bead, at the end of crocheting, that's the second blue bead there. And once again, we stick the needle in, we push the bead behind the needle, and that way when we pull the yarn through, it will also be sitting flat the way that it's supposed to sit. And then we go to the next chain stitch, that next blue bead, and we pull the yarn through. Um, and this will start to come together. Um, we go to the next green bead and we push it back, right, and sort of tighten everything a little bit, and then to the next bead in the initial chain, that's going to be this green bead here. And the nice thing about this is you can sort of look and see how it looks and tighten up the, the yarn as you go. But if at any point this doesn't look quite right, it's just like the crochet. You can always pull the yarn out and, and start over again. Uh, but this one's looking all right. So here's the, the bead at the end, the bead at the beginning. And now we've come up to the very last bead we crocheted on, this final yellow bead. Let me get the tail out of the way. Um, that's the last bead that needs to be attached. So once again, we stick the needle under, we make sure the bead is pushed back behind, and now that's sitting perfectly flat. You can see it's between these two beads here, the purple and the green, and so that purple bead, that one that's right below the beginning of the chain, is where we slip the yarn through next. And so now that is closed off. Now there's one other thing that I like to do that's a little bit unusual. I find that these two beads that I'm pointing to here, the purple beads, the one that we just sewed into and the one that's above it, they tend to have a little bit of a gap between them. If you compare them to like, say these two blue beads here, they should be sort of a little bit closer together with the holes touching a little bit more. Um, and so I like to take the yarn and stick it back through this top purple bead going in the other direction. It's a totally optional step, but I find that that helps to tighten that gap a little bit, make it look more like the rest of the beads. It's more obvious in the longer tubes than in this one. But, uh, and now we're gonna pull the yarn back in the, in the direction that pulls those beads closer together, and we're ready to start weaving the ends in. So I'm just taking the needle and sticking it through, and this is not that precise. It just has to go through so that the end gets secured. And as I said, that sort of makes those a little bit closer together. And now we're just gonna work the yarn through uh, a few times 
to, to make sure that it's held into place. Again, this is not super precise. We're just sticking it through so that the yarn sort of is held in by friction with the other yarn. Um, the one thing that you do want to be careful of, you want to make sure that the needle doesn't actually go through the hole of a bead like that. Um, that'll make the bead sit a little bit funny. So just make sure you bring it up between beads. Uh, and then you just keep working it back and forth. Uh, I usually do maybe three or four times uh, until you're satisfied. And then you can stop and go ahead and weave in the other end. Now, the thing that I like to keep an eye out for on this end, there's this extra little bit of yarn because that's where that last crochet stitch went in. So I like to pull this a little bit closer to straight through to make sure that bit of yarn pops back. Um, and now once again, we'll take this end and work it through back and forth. Um, I generally pull in the other direction. And uh, again, nothing terribly precise here. We're just putting it through three or four times to make sure that the ends are, are well secured into the middle of the torus. Okay, and that, that looks good. And so now we're ready to snip those ends off. Uh, so I'll bring my uh, scissors back in. And what I also like to do, not essential, but I like to kind of tug the yarn a little bit, pull this a bit tight, and then I snip a little bit away from the torus and then pull everything back out. That causes the end to retract inside so that I'm sure that I have a good long end, but that it doesn't poke out, right? So again, here I'm snipping a little bit away, as you can see that's sticking out, and then pulling it back in so that it's completely hidden. And so there we are, that is the completed smallest torus of the bunch. Nice and flexible, you can actually rotate it around. And there it is, and so that completes the set. Here's the medium and the large. And there you are, that's the complete set of seven color tori, and that's how you make them.